Hello and welcome to Somerville Highlander Basketball on Somerville Educational Channel 15. My name's Todd Harmon. I'm alongside Jack Conley, and we are bringing you Somerville girls basketball action today as they host the Revere Patriots. Revere comes in with a record of 0-4 today, Jack. They've lost to uh, Link Classical, Everett, Lynn English, as well as Medford, and Somerville comes in with that record at 0-2, losing uh, at Malden and then here at Lynn English late last week. Um, you know, we saw against that Lynn English team, a, a very practiced team in Lynn English, uh, some bright spots for Somerville, though, in that game. Well, Todd, uh, both teams tonight are senior driven. They both have multiple seniors revere with eight seniors, so with, uh, with, with five or six. And as a result, um, the senior leadership is certainly going to be evident. We're going to be looking for a couple of good scorers from Somerville. We know Jill Hutchinson and uh, Bridget Frazier were stalwarts the other day in the loss to Lynn English. We're looking for them to be going to the basket and hopefully improving that outside shooting, which was sadly lacking, I must say. No we're question. ready to get going here, Todd. Absolutely. We're going to get things underway here. As we uh, look over the uh, starting lineups for the game, Somerville comes in with Jill Hutchinson running the point. Uh, joining her in the backcourt, you got Bridget Frazier, and she will be inbounding to Jill just now. Elizabeth McEwen out there, Lindsay Ferreira, as well as Lauren Ferreira for the Lady Highlanders. We will get the starters for Revere for you as well in a moment after Jill Hutchinson's drive. She is going to be tied up there. And on the alternating possession, it goes to Revere. That was Lamise Al-Assad getting that tie up with uh, Jill Hutchinson. Also starting for the Patriots, we have Alana Nelson, number three. Uh, number 24 with, right there with the ball is Skyla DeSimone. Uh, DeSimone, I should say. Haley Belois as well. And uh, the other starter is Carolina Beto. That runner right there by Nelson is no good. Highlanders coming back just underway here. As Bridget Frazier into the paint, her shot is up, no good. Rebound comes out to Revere. De Simone brings it down, gives it off to El Assad. Her shot is no good. Elizabeth McEwen comes away with the rebound. As Hutchinson drives into the paint, puts up the runner. It's no good, gets her own rebound, puts it back up, no good, fighting for it as Verena gets the board. Kicks it over to Hutchinson from the corner. Her shot is up, and that three-pointer is good. As they open the scoring with a three-pointer from Jill Hutchinson from the right corner. Good ball movement on that play, Todd. Uh, the Jill went back up, missed, got the ball up again, missed again, but stepped back up. Ball was rebounded back to her, and away it went. As we're gonna have a foul there. As that's going to go against Lindsay Verena. That's her first, team first. De Simone running the point for the Patriots. Kicks it over to Belois. Belois, a freshman out there for the Patriots. As Nelson gets it stolen away, Jill Hutchinson with the steal. Gives it off to Frazier. She drives into the paint, puts up the runner, no good. Highlanders looking to attack on the offensive side. De Simone back the other direction right now. And that is out of bounds as she tried to get the pass over to Batero. You know, it was a good uh, move to the basket. Uh, the Highlanders went inside Bridget Frey's, which obviously Coach Freitas is telling everybody, let's get inside, get the best shot we can get. Highlanders with a nice job breaking the pressure. Ferreira gets it down on the left block, and she's called for the travel. As Lindsay took a few extra steps there, thought about going up for the shot, and it got blocked as she was going up. We have a sub into the game as Emma Benavido comes in. Benavido, normally a junior varsity player, stepping up to play on the varsity squad today. She'll come in for Lindsay Ferreira. Highlander settled back in a 2 3 zone as the attempted penetration stolen away. Elizabeth McEwen, good quick hands there. Hutchinson now running the point the other direction. The pass is out to the young freshman. She collects it, tries to kick it back to Hutchinson. It is stolen away. Ben Benatero goes in. Her shot is up. No good. Hutchinson comes away with a rebound. She pushes the tempo up the floor. Oh. Oh. There's too Ferreira. much tricky dribble on that one. Ferreira puts up that shot. No good. 
as the freshman pulls it away. It's going to be out of bounds. Hey, ref, fix the net. Fix the net. The net, the net, the net. Good shot by the ref there as he fixes that net right up. 40 years of officiating taught you pick up on these things. <laughs> well, Hutchinson's three was so pure, it just uh, made that uh, net just right hang right up on the rim. Wrapped it right up. El Assad now with the drive. She gets it inside. Pass is knocked away, but El Assad was able to save it, kicked it out for the three, and oh. it's no good from Nelson. Rebounds bounced around off of the Highlanders. All inbounds do occur from the side. COVID protocol. No under the basket. And Hutchinson knocks that one out of bounds. Great active hands there by Jill Hutchinson. Six seconds on the shot clock for the Patriots. McEwen closes out on Nelson. Gets it to Batero. Batero tries a runner from outside. No good. Bridget Frazier with the rebound as the shot clock went off. Islanders leading three to nothing. Hutchinson into the middle with the runner, and that one's good. Hutchinson with her second bucket of the game. And we have a timeout on the floors. Revere will take the timeout. The Highlanders lead this one five to nothing. Very aggressive offensively right now, Jack. They're going to the basket, Todd. And we noticed the other day it was a little tentative. Well, Jill Hutchinson and Bridget Frazier are going inside. Jill's got a little height advantage on the uh, on the Revere player guiding her, so she's taken inside. She's gone in now a couple of times. One turnover was costly, but she's got two nice layups going inside. I think we're going to see that until Coach uh, Matt Willis can figure out a way to stop it. Absolutely, no doubt about that. As you can see, Revere settled in right now. They tried a little bit, bit of full court pressure. The Highlander is able to break that. They're in a man to man right now, but if that penetration continues, you can certainly see them changing over to a zone, and that's when that outside shooting that wasn't there for the Highlanders last game hopefully will show itself. We know Joel Hutchinson and Bridget Frazier can make those outside shots, but they're going to take every opportunity because they're getting the chance to go inside. They'll keep doing until Revere can figure out a way to stop them. No doubt about that. And also on the defensive end, we've seen the Highlanders settling into their 2-3 zone. Very active hands in there as we've seen a couple passes where Revere's tried to get the ball to the interior. And uh, Jill Hutchinson specifically, uh, her hands are out. They're very active and they're knocking the ball away. She's knocking it out of bounds and also stolen it today. Yeah. So, so far, great game for Jill. Very good deal. She's got good poise. Uh, she's comfortable on the floor. And that uh, she's looking for her teammates. Uh, we're, it's nice to see. I think Coach Sheila Freitas Haley has done a nice job uh, uh, coaching up for this particular game to take advantage of what size matchups that she does have, especially with Jill, who can go inside. And Bridget Frazier is not afraid to go into the basket either. Uh, no doubt about that. As the Patriots now will inbound, Highlanders leading five to nothing. Four and a half minutes gone here in the, or left, I should say, here in the first quarter of play as they get the pass to the foul line, kick back out to De Simone. Her runner is up and it's good. And she will go to the line for the and one. Nice finish there by De Simone. She had an open lane. Todd, she took advantage of that opportunity and put up the runner. Broke down the zone very effectively with that interior pass to Belois at the foul line. Then she was able to kick it out to De Simone. De Simone's foul shot though is short, no good. So it's five to two Highlanders as Bridget Frazier will bring it. And she steps just on the sideline here right in front of us, watching her feet there. And she got a toe on the sideline caught by the referee. Well, it's those turnovers we talk about all the time, Todd. And already in this period with just four minutes, four turnovers for the Highlanders. Thank you, Rebea has three. That three pointer is put up by Nelson and it is good. And that is a tie ball game as Alana Nelson hits the three. Had a hand in the face and was able to hit it. So Revere coming out of their timeout with five points quickly on the board have tied this game up as they get it to Ferreira, do the Highlanders. She gets the ball knocked away. It's going to go out of bounds, given to the Patriots as Ferreira Revere. Revere tried to put the ball on the floor with two people beside her, Todd, and that was a no-no because somebody gets the hand in there and knocked it loose. So off the turnover now, Revere coming back, and that's a travel. As the freshman there, number 20, Belois, Haley Belois, 
takes the extra step. Very textbook way to break down the zone there as they tried to get it into the foul line again. Bridget Frazier driving into the middle. No one was going to there stop her. There we go. They give him the opportunity, Todd. Bridget took advantage. He had the lane open, and she went. And I think we're going to be seeing that all afternoon. So that foul, I think, is going to go against Belois. Number 20. And that is her first. Frazier's first free throw is up. It's no good. And again, Todd, uh, for the viewers, the COVID protocol is on a two or three shot foul. Nobody occupies the lane until either the second of a two shot or the second of a three shot foul. In this case, the players are lined up now for the second shot, ready to rebound. Second shot up by Frazier, no good as it rims out. Tied up 5-5, five, five, three and a half remaining here in the first quarter as De Simone drives into the paint. Her runner is no good, rebound tapped out to the Highlanders as Jill Hutchinson has. Hutchinson with it now. Spins into the lane, kicks it out to Elizabeth McEwen, who will give it to Frazier. Frazier at the top of the key with the ball, looking for some help. Gives it off to Benavito. Mm -hmm. Benavito looking for some help there. Nice job by Bridget Frazier getting down onto the floor. You know, timeout on the floor for the Highlanders. Bridget Frazier saving the turnover right there. And I can tell you, number three uh, freshman, um, Emma Benavides on the floor. She's a little tentative uh, playing the game. I'm sure she's a little nervous playing with the upperclassmen, but um, obviously coach has enough, um, seen enough in her to make sure that she's gonna be on the floor and that she should be looking for that shot. You got an open shot, take it. And uh, I think she was a little hesitant when she got the ball and, and a little nervous about what to do with it, but I think those instincts will take over. It's just a little bit of nervousness right now, as you can appreciate for freshmen playing the first varsity game. Absolutely, no doubt about that. She does have a, a rebound in the game. She got a rebound earlier in the game. Good uh, positioning on that one. Uh, she is going to be subbed out right now, as I note that she's gone over to the uh, seating area, the bench area, and checking in for the Highlanders is, I believe, going to be Lydia Blanchard, uh, number 10. She'll be checking in for the Highlanders. And two, the COVID protocols, Todd, is that the timeouts are a minute and 15 seconds now. So there's a little longer time for the coach to not only impart some wisdom, but also if a player needs to, to make adjustments to a mask or get a new one. Hutchinson has it now for the Highlanders. Gets it over there to Blanchard. Blanchard from the left wing. Gives it to Frazier. That was a shot clock violation. I had not even noted the shot clock and neither had the Highlanders. Neither had the Highlanders, Todd, and that's it. Uh, that's something without, and there's a clock right there at both ends of the floor, so you yep. can't use that as an excuse. Yeah, that was something that was missing last time uh, that, that uh, we played here, but uh, have that now with the shot clock out there. Patriots working it around. That's a two-point shot put up, no good by al -Assad. Rebound brought out by Revere, and that one's going to be blocked and taken away by Jill Hutchinson. Hutchinson. Jill had a good hand on it. Driving into the paint, she gets the foul. She will go to the line for two. That's going to be the opportunity. Jill and Bridget Frazier have the chance to go down low. They're going to keep doing it until Revere can figure out a way to stop them. I think Jill and Bridget are going to be taking the in. I did not see possible. who got charged for that foul. That's the only thing, but... We will keep track of that as best we can. As Hutchinson's first free throw is up and it's good. Hmm. As Patero is going to check out of the game, checking in to the game. Levis Anderson for Revere. Second one by Hutchinson, no good. Long rebound off the back iron, comes back to her, and Hutchinson puts it in. That's the way to make up for the missed free throw, Todd. She drew it up like that. So now 8-5 lead for the Highlanders, two minutes remaining in the quarter. As they try to get the penetration to the interior, back out to Nelson on the right wing. They get it to De Simone on the inside. Her shot is up. It's no good. Knocked around off of the Patriots. It will go to the Highlanders. Three rebounders in there, close to her, which made all the difference in the world. Three Highlanders in there, tight ball went off of Revere player, Highlander basketball. Revere extending the pressure to full court, easily broken as Bridget Frazier drives the lane and looks for the end one. 
excellent drive, as you said, taking advantage of the opportunity. Bridget went exactly where she was going. That foul is on Alana Nelson. That will be Alana's first one. Team's third foul, fourth foul, I believe. Or no third. Frazier at the line for the end one, a little long off the back iron. De Simone comes away with it. Al Saad saves it, tries to get it inside, stolen away as Bridget Frazier is able to knock it to Hutchinson. Minute 30 remaining, Highlanders leading by five, 10 to five. As Frazier kicks it over to Blanchard. Blanchard out there gets it to Elizabeth McEwen. Her three pointer is up, it's no good from the corner. Long rebound fought for. We have a jump ball as Mano Cody. Good job getting to that ball. And Elizabeth uh, McEwen did a nice job. As soon as she got the ball, she put that right up there. She's made that shot frequently from the corner. It was up. Sorry it didn't hit the rim, but the ball was in play. She should be looking for that shot a lot. So the runner there is no good. Goes out of bounds off the Highlanders. So it will Good be reviewed. action though, Todd. The Highlanders are going inside looking to get the shot and they're rebounding well. Checking into the game now for the Highlanders is going to be Kinsey Ramadan. Settling, settled into that 2 3 zone. The so Patriots attack it, going to the foul line, kick it out to the corner to Nelson. Nelson looking to drive, poked away by Jail Hutchinson once again as Ramadan gives it back to Hutchinson. Hutchinson drives into the paint, her shot is up, it's no good, rebound being fought for, tipped around, McEwen tipped it out, and Ramadan got it. Bridget Frazier with the three, that hits nothing but the bottom of the net, 13 to five. Take, take an advantage of the opportunity, the shot was there, and Bridget very confident put the ball up, nothing but net. So they work it around, that shot put up, no good by Anderson, and Hutchinson with the rebound on the weak side. 25 seconds left in the quarter. The Highlanders can hold for one shot. Time. And Ramadan did not get the memo. She tried the shot, blocked back to her. Coach Haley has been very vociferous from the sideline. Hold for one. And that's the one McEwen from the corner. That is good for three. Three seconds remaining as De Simone takes the half court shot. It is up, it is no good. And the Highlanders lead by 11 with a big charge at the end of that quarter, uh, 16 to five, as the outside shooting has been there for the Highlanders with three pointers in that quarter. Big difference between this game and Lynn English, Todd, is the fact that the Highlanders are going to the basket very aggressively. And what does that do? That opens up the outside shot. Elizabeth McEwen missed the first was not uh, bashful about taking the shot again. Nothing but net on that time. Well, I think we're gonna see more of that going on here for the rest of this uh, the second quarter. They got the opportunity to get on low. They're gonna to continue to do it. Right now, it's pretty much the, uh, the Jill and Bridget show because they've got the uh, lion's share of the points so far. But that's okay because they've got the opportunity. They're gonna go inside and when they don't make the layup, they've been getting fouled. So I think we'll see them a little more, a little more free throws and this could be a runaway. Absolutely, as the Highlanders did look good there in the first quarter, Jill Hutchinson with eight points leading all scores. Bridget Frazier five points in that quarter, and Elizabeth McEwen with three because of that corner three that she hit right at the end of the quarter. Over on the Revere side, Alana Nelson has three as she hit one from the outside, and Skyla DeSimone hit a runner in the lane, and that accounts for the five points from Revere. On the defensive side for the Highlanders, they're packed into that 2-3 zone. They're doing a great job keeping active, getting their hands in the passing lanes, and Jill Hutchinson just keeps knocking the ball away from people. She's got a great two-way game going today, Todd, both offensively and defensively. Her hands are in there. She had a really nice deal where she didn't reach. She tapped the ball and went and got it, which is the way you want it see a high school player. Don't reach across because the officials see you reaching, you're likely to get that foul call. But she tapped the ball and went and got it up the floor, turned into a basket. Great transition right now. Both teams are equally matched with turnovers, Todd. I've got four for uh, the Revere Patriots and I've got four for uh, the Lady Highlanders. And right now, if we can keep those to a minimum, keep going to the basket, it should prove beneficial for the Highlanders. 
So we will begin the second quarter of action. The Highlanders leading this one 16 to five. I believe it will be Revere ball. Yes, it will. As Haley Belois will inbound. Actually, no, strike that. Frankie DeAngelis. Frankie DeAngelis will come over and inbound. And Belois gets it to DeAngelis. Over to Batero, her three-pointer is up. It's no good, long rebound comes out. They get it back over to Batero. Now Belois kicks it back to Batero. Batero tries to penetrate. She loses the ball. Still Hutchinson again, Chuck. Yeah, absolutely. Ball stolen right back. Those is poked away. Kick out. Anderson kicks it back around. Batero drives into the paint. Her shot is up. It's no good. Rebound pulled away by Bridget Frazier. Very aggressive by Bridget going to the basket to pull that ball down and getting it up the floor. And Bridget will kick it off. Looking to McEwen. Her two-pointer was up. It's no good. Bridget Frazier with a nice offensive board puts it right back up. Great job positioning by Bridget Frazier. She moved in, was in perfect position for that rebound charge. Score now is 18 to five, the Highlanders lead as the runner is put up by the freshman and no good as Belois, a nice try there, but uh, did not come away with anything. As a great skip pass there by Jill Hutchinson. Foul is going to be called as she found Bridget Frazier on the far side of the lane. Two zero on that foul, and Haley Belois. And Haley Belois will pick that one up. That's Belois' second. And there's a great inbound. Oh. Jill Hutchinson just didn't quite finish, but fought for her own rebound and puts it up. Let's see what the call is as the shot was put up. There are six uh, Revere Patriots yeah, on the floor. Which, that would be the problem. That would be a technical foul. Yep. But they must have agreed that uh, the player came out after the whistle blew. That's the only way they could get out of not calling a technical foul on that play, Todd. All right, so 18 to five, no score there. And uh, Lady Highland of Balls, Bridget Frazier working a give and go with Jill Hutchinson, gets the ball back. Good job by her. She fought through the three quarter, put up, and Lindsay Ferreira hits it. Lindsay Frey is feeling about 10 feet tall right now. I heard her, Lin she said bank. I heard <laughs> Lindsay say it. As Batero back the other direction, that's going to just rim out from the left wing as Frazier comes away with the rebound. 21-5 now the lead for the Highlanders. Six minutes remaining in the second quarter. As Hutchinson breaking it down, trying to get inside. She'll give it off to Frazier who makes the run down the right side of the lane. Her runner is no good and Batero gets the weak side rebound. Al-Assad with it now. She drives into the paint. That ball is stolen away as Farina ends up with it. And we got a stoppage of play. Looks like there's a medical situation. Either there's a... a I think we got some blood, blood, I heard. Uh, Bridget Frazier, maybe. So we'll get yeah, the athletic yeah. training staff on this. Michelle Kelly, Kelly the head athletic trainer. And now this minute and 15 second timeout is going to make all the difference now. They can regroup, figure out a way to keep penetrating. If Rivia can't figure out a way to stop them, it's going to be a great day for both Bridget Frazier and Jill Hutchinson, who've already, uh, with the points that they both scored right now, they haven't figured out a way to do it yet, and it might be difficult to do now. And the ball is going in from the outside, which unfortunately the Rivia Patriots are having their problems. They've only made the the one three so far in the game, Todd. So with 535 remaining here in the second quarter, Highlanders leading this one 21 to five. And let's see here. I'm just curious what, uh, what the situation is in terms of Bridget Frazier. Well, she has been isolated from the rest of the, the squad. I figured it was some sort of a medical situation. Didn't appear that they were addressing any banning right. or addressing of any uh, type at this point, other than the fact that she might have been winded and uh, took an elbow or got bumped and she was out just recovering because 
doesn't appear to be any cut, otherwise the trainer would be working on that right away. And the rule is you can't come back into the game until you've been completely covered and the trainer certifies you're good to go. So Hutchinson now running the point, defended by Batero. Kicks it around. There's Farina with a three-pointer. Her shot up is no good. Long rebound comes out, Batero gets it. Al-Assad with it now, she runs the point. Drives into the paint, her shot is up. No good as it bounces out, Farina gets the rebound. She had the right idea, Todd, but just a little bit too aggressive, putting that ball up off the glass and it just went off the front rim. Jill Hutchinson with it now, trying to get it over to Elizabeth McHugh, and that one's stolen away by Alicia Lung. As Batero gets it on the left wing, she will have it there. Defended there by Elena LaGreca, as Batero going all the way around, and she puts up the runner, and it's good. Nice job. McEwen hit the ball for the Highlanders, gets it over to LaGreca. She dribbles down towards the paint. Her back pass no good as Vitero steals it away. And that one's put up and good by Alisa. 21 to nine now the score. Bridget Frazier ready to check back in on the next stoppage of the clock. Four minutes, five seconds remaining in the court. LaGreca has it on the right wing. She'll look for some help there. She's defended tightly. And Farina with the dribble penetration kicks it off to Elizabeth McEwen. And Wonderful there's pass. McEwen. Great pass by Hutchinson to McEwen for the two. As Patero gets it over, dribble penetration there. Runner put up no good. And we have a jump ball on the alternating possession. The Highlanders will get it. That was Belliston. We have Demopolis. a big line change here now, Todd. Three new Highlanders in, including Bridget Frazier. Absolutely. So we've got Bridget Frazier in, Elizabeth McEwen with it as well. Also on the floor, we have Kinsey Ramadan, number 20. We've got number 10, Lydia Blanchard. And number 31, Lauren Farena, as the runner is no good, blocked there. So Revere comes back the other direction, trailing by 14. De Simone. All the way around, gives it off to Nelson. Nelson's drive, she goes in, she's fouled as she went in, as Farina will get called for that one. Got that as a second team foul on the Lady Highlanders. And Alana Nelson's first shot is good. Nelson's second shot is up, and it's good. Full court pressure being applied. Jill Hutchinson able to break it, trying to trap it mid-court. She gets it over to Frazier. Frazier tries to pass it over to Farina. A little out of control there, and pass goes out of bounds. Turnover Richard on the had the, the right idea, but Farina was just not in a position to handle that pass. Uh, otherwise, it would have started the offense going, but I still think um, Jill Hutchinson and Bridget Frazier are still going to have a good opportunity to go inside. Patero drives into the paint. Her shot is up. No good. Defended that time by Farina. Frazier comes away with the rebound. 2.30 left in the quarter. Highlanders leading by 12. She gets it over to Hutchinson. Hutchinson at the point. Defended out there by Lung. Frazier has it. Gets a screen there by Farina. Back over to Farina on the roll. Gets it to Hutchinson. Her three-pointer is up no good from the top of the key, and Batero comes away with the weak side rebound. It was a good look, though, Todd. It was a good look. Now Al Hassad has it. She's defended by Ramadan. Hutchinson looking to defend Lung as Lung drives in. We have a travel called against Lung. Turnover there will go to the Lady Highlanders. Full court pressure once again being applied by Revere. 
Emma Benavito checking into the game for the Highlanders. Also Elizabeth McEwen checking into the game for the Highlanders. Frazier looking for some help, gets it to Hutchinson. She gets it forward to Violet. Violet's shot is up, it's no good. As that is Violet Stickgold there, number 13 for the Highlanders. De Simone back the other direction. Her shot is no good. Nice defense by the Highlanders, making her adjust her shot. Well, Revere's had a lot of trouble uh, getting inside, and when they have gotten inside, they've not been able to capitalize on the layups. Hutchinson gets it over to Stick Gold. Stick Gold looking to pen penetrate. Looking for some help now. Down from Block. She stepped out of bounds on the end line. Turnover goes back to Revere. Here with it, Nelson drives into the paint. Her runner is up, it's no good. Just off the front iron, Brent. And Bridget Frazier with the rebound. She's trying to go coast to coast with it, but gets defended well. As uh, Bridget was going one on three, which uh, was a little difficult, with both hands reaching in there. As they get the pass to the inside, shot is put up, no good. Second shot by Bella, no good. And we have a jump ball as Elizabeth McEwen fighting for it underneath. On the alternating possession, it goes to Revere. And again, what happens frequently, Todd, is that the player hits a rebound and they pull it down, shoulder height, and it's very easy for a defender just to put the hand there and tie it up. Belois puts up the shot. Her shot is no good from the right wing. Lana Nelson gets the rebound and her little underhanded runner is good. Four points for Nelson here in the second quarter. Hutchinson and Frazier are able to break the pressure. Frazier into the paint, she kicks it off to Stickgold. Stickgold shot too hard as Benavita got the rebound, kicked it out, and McEwen's shot was blocked. Islanders still with it and lose it there as Stickgold gets it stolen away by Batero. And Stickgold fouls Batero as Batero is coming down with one second left on the clock. And the, the problem there was uh, Stickgold made a turnover and then she was trying to make up it so quickly she ended up being too aggressive and fouled through their Patriot. Batero's last second shot, no good. So the Highlanders will lead going into the half by the score of 23 to 13. Uh, tough going there in the second quarter after scoring a lot of points in the first, only uh, seven points for the Highlanders in that second quarter, but they maintain a 10 point lead as Revere was able to uh, hang eight points up there in that quarter. So uh, tightening up just a little bit, but the Highlanders still doing a good job. The Revere defense looks to be stepping up a little bit though and being more aggressive. Well, the other thing, Todd, that uh, you can point to is the fact that Coach Elfredis Haley has been subbing in liberally here in the second period, trying to get some underclassmen a little bit more experience. Uh, uh, Stickgold was in there uh, and she was having a little bit of a problem. Uh, we saw the freshman, um, Emma Beneveda, come in for a, a short stint. Uh, Coach Freitas realizes it's uh, wise, particularly when you have a good lead, to get someone in to get some game experience. Without the spectators, it's, it's not the same thing without the crowd noise uh, due to the COVID protocols, but still, it's actual game experience. And, those, these players will certainly benefit as we go forward. It also gives the, uh, the Somerville uh, uh, trio of Hutchinson, uh, McEwen, and Fraser a chance to get a little bit of a rest and come back. I think we'll see the start of the third period with, uh, again, the, uh, the, that, uh, that trio of, uh, of Highlanders uh, going to the basket frequently. Uh, they've combined for, right now, a, a lion's share of the, the points uh, as they did in the Lynn English game. Liz McEwen hitting up a, a couple of shots now, Todd, that has made a, a difference. So I think we're gonna see a little more aggressive third period coming up uh, with, especially with Jill and uh, Bridget Frazier really having a, a good first two quarters. Absolutely, as uh, Jill Hutchinson, she's leading all scores with eight points. She scored all eight of those in the first quarter. Uh, uh, also, uh, Lindsay, for, I'm sorry, uh, uh, um, Bridget Frazier has seven points. Uh, Lindsay Farina has three, Elizabeth McEwen with five points, 
for the Lady Highlanders. Over on the Revere side of the ledger, Alana Nelson leads all scorers for the Patriots as she has seven points. Uh, Skyla DeSimone with two, uh, Lamise Al-Assad with two, and Carolina Batero with two. Um, in that second quarter, it's, it looked like uh, Revere was really attacking the basket more aggressively. We saw a lot of penetration from specifically Batero as well as Belois. Uh, came up empty a lot of times, but a lot of those were close shots. So, you know, the uh, Highlanders got to keep that defensive intensity going on at the same time that they uh, meet the defensive intensity that they saw the, from Revere. Uh, the Highlanders did a great job with the zone early on in the in the first quarter and as you saw Revere had it uh, took a few outside shots that did not drop but with the younger players coming in a little less experienced they were a little looser uh, defending under the basket so it gave Revere more of an opportunity to penetrate I think uh, we'll probably see coach uh, Freitas Haley try and tighten that up and probably force Revere if you're going to beat us you're going to beat us from the outside Yep, as we open out the second half of play, the Highlanders on the floor, the same starting lineup that they had to begin the game. Joe Hutchinson out there, number 21. Uh, Bridget Frazier right in front of us, number 24 will be inbounding. Lindsay Farena, number 23. Elizabeth McEwen, 22. And Lauren Farena, 31. Revere on the other side, Al-Assad being up right now on Jill Hutchinson, using those active hands and almost poked it away, and she stole it away from behind, does Al-Assad. As she goes down and puts it up for two, Revere opens out the second half with a bucket. And the full court pressure being applied as Frazier looking to prevent the trap there. It's stolen away by Batero. Another turnover for the Lady Highlanders and DeSimone finishes. So the 10 point lead is now a six point lead for the Highlanders immediately here. It's certainly not the way the Highlanders wanted to start. As Frazier Gets her runner blocked as she went into the paint. We'll see whether there's a foul fun. called. They are going to get a foul called. Number three, the foul is on Elena Nelson. Elena Nelson. So Elena Nelson gets that foul against her. And Frazier at the line, 4-2. 0 for 3 from the line so far today is Bridget. First one up. And good. The reverse jinx worked. Second shot by Frazier is up, and no good. Just out the front iron, Elizabeth McEwen fighting hard, able to come away with the rebound, looking for some help now. Her pass, though, is intercepted, as uh, Beloit's able to get it. This is not the way that uh, Coach Haley wanted to see the second half start. As Batero tries the runner, it's short, rebounded by Frazier. Giving up four quick points in the first 30 seconds was not the design that she had at halftime. As Hutchinson gets it over, Farina's shot is up. It's no good as that was blocked. Gets it inside to Farina as well. Lauren Farina on the interior. Lindsay Farina on the exterior there. Lauren put the ball on the floor and he had it just knocked away. And Alana Nelson's shot is up. It's no good. And they're going to get Jill Hutchinson with the over the back as Batero had the uh, weak side position on her. So Hutchinson gets the foul. That's... I believe her first. It's her first, as I have it too, Todd. Dee Simone has it. Kind of had it on her hip there for a second. Gets it over to Nelson. Nelson drives into the paint. She puts up the shot defended by Farina. That is no good, and Bridget Frazier gets the rebound. No pressure applied that time as they get it over to Farina. Lindsay's shot is up. It's no good. Belois comes away with that rebound. She's running the floor. Drives it down, kicks it off. El Hassad gets it over to De, 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 De Simone. De Simone hits the three. And Highlanders lead now 24 to 20. Four point lead for the Highlanders. Frazier drives it into the paint. Al Hassad able to pick her pocket. Going back the other direction, two on two. Al Hassad goes up and she is fouled. Al Hassad has come around it, alive here in the third period, Todd. Is a, a, a couple of steals turned into a layup and some a very solid defense going so far. So the Patriots have come alive here and the Highlanders cooled off. 
That one's going to go against Lindsay Ferreira. I've got that down as her second personal. First one by Al Hassad is up and good. Emma Benavido has checked in for the Highlanders, as well as Mano Koti. Front rim there, Jill Hutchinson able to get the rebound, stealing it away as uh, Belois tried to follow her shot. Hutchinson drives into the paint, kicks it out to McEwen. The three-pointer from the left wing is up, no good. Back the other direction, De Simone has it. Kicks it over to Nelson, over to Bator, or Al-Assad now with the two-pointer, and it is good. It is a two-point, or one point, I should say, Highlander lead, 24 to 23, as Benavita's shot is up, it's no good. Cody gets the rebound, gets it back to Benavita. Her shot is up, no good as well. So Benavito taking the shot there, Jack, that she wasn't taking earlier. And it's a little more confidence uh, being on the floor that first time. Now the instincts kick in. You're close to the basket. Let's put the shot up. So a timeout is on the floor. 420 remaining in the quarter. 422 remaining in the quarter. The uh, Patriots have charged back into this one, Jack. As they were trailing at the half, now they trail by only one, 23 to 24. As uh, you pointed out, Al Assad has been absolutely fantastic here, opening out this second quarter, hitting from the outside, driving into the paint, and making things happen as well. And defensively, mm -hmm. she made the quick steal as we started the period, turned that into a basket. She's been very aggressive at the other end, forced uh, another turnover for the Highlanders here, and both teams. Uh, have been plagued with turnovers, but the Highlanders have cooled off here in this third period. The, uh, the th three-point shots aren't dropping like they were in the first half. As a result, we've got a close ball game. We've got nine points scored already with just uh, under uh, four minutes uh, gone here in the period. So it's uh, uh, gonna be one where Coach Frieda Haley now has to emphasize the defense, try and put some attention to uh, uh, Lamise Al-Assad, who is been everywhere on the floor, and as a result, she's going to do what she can to prevent Skylar DeSimone, who's got uh, five points here in the period. Be aggressive on defense with those two, and keep penetrating. That's what got them into a big lead in the, early in the first period. Go into the basket. Uh, Bridget Frazier and Jill have done a good job penetrating. They just have to get inside a little bit more, and obviously, the Revere coaches dropping back and forcing them to try and take the outside shot. So it'll be the Patriots ball here. They trail by one. Highlanders up 24 to 23, 422 remaining in the third quarter. Highlanders drop back into the 2-3 zone. Benavita defending there on Al Assad as she's out on her there. Alana Nelson's shot is up, no good. But the Belois able to get the rebound, kicks it back out. Batera's shot up, off the backboard and good. That is a lead now by, of two for the Patriots. So they apply the full court pressure. Oh, Bridget Frazier trying much. to lead Jill Hutchinson down court, led her too much. And that is a turnover for the Lady Highlanders. 26-24 is the score. De Simone goes in, her runner is up. It's no good, but she's fouled. She will go to the line. Foul going to be called on Lydia Blanchard. That's her first, team's third here in the second half. First shot up, and it's good by DeSimo. Three-point lead right now for Revere. Second shot by DeSimone is good. Full court pressure once again being applied by the Patriots. Frazier bringing the ball up. And we have a foul being called against Emma Benavido. And she's going to get whistled for the moving screen, I believe. It's, a, it's, it's exactly that. Offensive foul, lose, can lose that 
all valuable possession. And Batero puts up the three. No good. Long rebound comes out. Al Assad gets it. Kicks it over to Belois. Her shot is up. No good for the two. Bridget Frazier gets the rebound. Back the other direction now. Jill Hutchinson drives into the paint and a jump ball. Al Hassad just great with those hands. It's like the, it, it, she's magnetically attracted with her hands to the ball. Textbook tie up. She had both hands around the ball. No contact with the offensive player. Both hands. Jill could do nothing with it. Tie ball. Alternating possessions. The Patriots get it. Now Batero has it defended by Hutchinson. 2-3 zone for the Lady Highlanders. Al Assad puts up the shot. That's no good from two. But the long rebound comes out to Belois and the Patriots as Batero has it now. Batero defended by Hutchinson. She goes down, almost traveled with it, and instead goes out of bounds. You can feel the momentum has completely shifted, Todd. Uh the Lady Highlanders have only got a point so far in the period, turned the ball over too much. As Belois got into the passing lane there, got it over to Al Assad, and she is fouled. She will go to the line for two. Patriots leading this one 28 to 24. They have charged into this lead here in the second half. Elizabeth McEwen picked up that foul, Todd. Uh, That's her second. Or her first, I'm her sorry. First, yep. First shot by Al Hassad is no good. Uh, subs in and a lineup now on the second of the two free throws. It's Ramadan has checked in for the Highlanders. Al Hassad's second shot is up and it's good. Full court pressure once again from the Patriots. It's been very effective here in the second half. They've gotten this five point lead with that pressure and with effective offense. As Frazier looking to pass it to Ramadan, unable to get it there. As Al Assad all over the place defensively and we have a jump ball. Alternating possession will go to the Highlanders. Once again, Al Assad involved in that. The momentum shift is just, you, you can feel it on the target. It's a completely gone the other way. Hutchinson attacking. Puts that one up over to McEwen, who puts it up and in. Third points of the quarter for the Highlanders. That one's up, the runner no good, but there's Belois with the rebound. Three put up by Al Assad, no good, and McEwen gets the board. Highlanders back the other direction, trailing by three, 29 to 26. Two minutes remaining in this one, timeout called by Sheila Freitas Haley. She wants to talk it over with the Lady Highlanders. And there's a lot to talk over right now, Todd, because right now the offensive momentum that was very evident in the first half has virtually disappeared in this particular period now. Unfortunately, there's only three points that have been scored so far, and we've got uh, just uh, two minutes to go. So six minutes of very little offense, and we've seen the Revere Patriots come alive here with, we've got five, nine, ten, twelve, uh, over a dozen points scored. Uh, they've come alive here, and that momentum shift has completely gone their way. We don't see the same aggressiveness on rebounding that the Highlanders had in the first half. And I'm sure Coach Freitas Haley is letting everybody know that it's going to take that defensive effort, as you pointed out early in the game, that it's going to be necessary. So we'll let Revere try and shoot from the outside, but they've just given up too many inside uh, the paint uh, points so far. Especially uh, Lamise Al-Assad has just been... Uh, uh, terrific, uh, both offensively and defensively in this uh, third period, Todd. No question about mm -hmm. it. Uh, Lamisa Al-Assad has been involved on the defensive side, no question. Uh, she has stolen the ball away. She's uh, gotten involved in multiple uh, tie-ups in terms of uh, alternating possessions and uh, just been fantastic with her active hands near the ball and really seems to be getting under Jill Hutchinson's skin a little bit. As the inbounds comes to Blanchard, back out to Bridget Frazier, over to Hutchinson, the top of the key three by Hutchinson's no good. Rebound pulled away by Alassad. She kicks it out to Nelson. Nelson's shot is no good, knocked around, and DeSimone comes away with it. She saves it from going out to Alassad, but it is a timeout by Revere. They will maintain possession. Just 
it just seems that uh, specifically De Simone and Al Assad, this third quarter, they've just been all over the floor. They've been quicker to loose balls. They've been actively, in terms of defensively, they've been knocking balls away and they've been getting tie ups with the uh, ball handlers as well. And not as much of the activity that we've seen from the Highlanders. Now, the Highlanders got a little complacent, I think it's fair to say, Todd, because they're not as aggressive uh, rebounding and just on that last. Uh, uh, attempt down the center of the floor. Three people were out behind the foul line, and so you were not having much of an opportunity to rebound with three teammates beyond the foul line when the ball was rebounding um, uh, off of the rim. So I, I'm sure the coach is trying to emphasize that uh, defensive uh, posture that got them the big lead early in the first half. Now we're down three with a minute um, and 38 seconds to go. We want to come out of this, this period at least even or up a basket if possible. Absolutely, no doubt about that. The Highlanders came in, uh, uh, came into this half leading, and we have seen a huge, I believe, 17-point production uh, from the uh, from the Patriots, and uh, just three points on the board here in the third quarter for the Lady Highlanders. So uh, difficult times, but we will see what they can do here as we near the end of the third quarter. A minute 30 remaining here in the third quarter. It's the Patriots. Al-Assad with it now, looking for some help. She's defended well by Blanchard, gets it off to De Simone. De Simone kicks it out. And that is Nelson with the runner, and she finishes nicely. That's her first points of the quarter. Minute 10 remaining, Highlanders trailing by five. Hutchinson goes in and she gets the foul. We'll see who that goes against. She will go to the line, Will Jill Hutchinson, Hutchinson 4-2. And that foul is going to go against Lamise Al-Assad. That is her first. I believe that's the first team foul. For, that is the first team foul. Maybe you're here in the yep. second half. Hutchinson's first shot is up, and it's good. Second one up for Hutchinson, and that one's good. Good. Three-point deficit for the Lady Highlanders. One minute left in the third quarter. De Simone kicks it off over to Nelson. Nelson kicks it back over, and that is Al-Assad. Now Nelson with it again. Al-Assad puts up the shot. It is no good. Rebound fought for Hutchinson. Pulls it away from Beloitz. 45 seconds remaining in the quarter. As Hutchinson trying to break down Al-Assad, her shot is up, it's no good. Rebound knocked in by De Simone as she outfought Ramadan for it. De Simone, no, now De Simone over to Al-Assad, Al-Assad to Nelson. Nelson will put up the three, it is no good. Long rebound comes out to McEwen, 20 seconds left in the quarter, shot clock is off. McEwen comes across with 13 left in the quarter, looking to break down Al-Assad. She drives into the paint, loses control of the ball. Al-Assad comes away with it. Three seconds left, Al-Assad looking for a shot, and she hits it at the end of the quarter. What a quarter of basketball for Lamise Al-Assad from the defensive side to the offensive side. Uh, six points for her in the quarter, but defensively she just was, she was in Joe Hutchinson's, uh, she was right up on her hip the entire time. What appears Coach Willis has done for year is he's told the squad, listen, it's Frazier and Hutchinson, when Jill comes down the lane, somebody come over and try and knock the ball loose, and that's exactly what happened on that particular play. Jill was going ISO, she was going to try and attack the basket on her own, as soon as she went in the lane, Somebody came over, popped the ball loose, and that opportunity was lost. And now we have Assad uh, having a terrific period uh, and basically has shifted the momentum completely to the Riviera Patriots at this point in the game right now, Todd. Yeah, Assad and De Simone 
uh, where the two most active players uh, out there, uh, Assad on the defensive end was just all over the place. And on the offensive end, De Simone uh, put in, uh, let's see here, uh, she had a three-pointer and then she also had another basket and put two uh, free throws in as well. So she had seven points that quarter. Uh, that gives her nine for the game. Uh, nine points also Alana Nelson over on the Patriots side. Uh, uh, Betero has seven. She hit a three-pointer there in the third quarter. Uh, Lamise Al-Assad with eight points and one point for Haley mm. Belois over on the Highlander side. Only three players have scored. That would be Jill Hutchinson, who has 10 points. Uh, Elizabeth McEwen has seven. And Bridget Frazier has eight points. So, uh, and, oh, I'm sorry, strike that. Lindsay Farina has scored. She hit a three-pointer in the second quarter, but only three players scored for the Highlanders in the third quarter. So, uh, the Highlanders struggled in that quarter. They've got to find a way to diversify the offense a bit. Well, that's just it. And if you're going inside and you're going to get double teamed, then obviously the ball has to go back outside with the opportunity to try and find somebody who's to get two people on you. Somebody has to be open. So, finding that open person and make sure that that person can convert the uh, either easy jump shot or a layup. That's going to be the difficult assignment for the Highlanders now because obviously Revere is going to try and drop back a little bit and force the Highlanders to try and beat them from the outside. Uh, they've been very aggressive and will continue to do so. Highlanders have to find a way to get back inside as they did in the first period. So we will move here to the fourth quarter of play. The Highlanders trailing by the score of 33 to 28, eight minutes remaining in this game. So the Highlanders and the Patriots both looking for their first wins of the season. Malois will inbound to DeSimone. Matero with it, kicks it inside to Belois. Belois puts it up, no good, defended there on the low block as McEwen comes away with the rebound. Frazier slowly bringing it up, not trying to run it up too quickly. She kicks it out to McEwen on the corner. McEwen's shot from the corner is up. It's no good, and Frazier is going to get whistled for the over the back as De Simone had the interior position on her for the rebound. Frazier was not able to move around. Ooh. We got. We're in the bonus. Yep, we're in the bonus. I had not tracked that one well, but we are in the bonus. That is the seventh team foul against the Highlanders here in the second half. So, De Simone goes to the line. First shot is up, and it's good. So Revere opens out the scoring here in this, this fourth quarter with the opening free throw by Simone. Patero gets the rebound. She puts up the three, and it's good. Patero left alone on the left wing, able to put that one home. Frazier back over to Hutchinson now. The Highlanders trailing by nine. As Frazier looking to the inside, tries to get it to Farena. That one's stolen wide by De Simone. De Simone goes up, her shot is up and no good. Defended by Hutchinson, but there's Al Assad as she's able to get the rebound. Vitero with it now from the left wing. Her shot is up no good as McEwen gets the rebound. You can see that the Revere Patriots are very loose and confident now taking the shots. They've, they've got a lead and they're going to keep the pressure on. And you see they're tripling the ball handlers now for the high school. And there's another turnover. As far as De Simone was able to scale that one away. al back the other direction. She puts it up and in and she will go to the line looking to add the and one as Jill Hutchinson gets whistled for that foul. And Sad is keeping the uh, keeping herself going. She uh, did a great job going to the basket making it and now rewarded with the free throw. 11 point lead for Revere. Al Assad looking to make it 12 at the line to finish the and one. That one rims out, no good. Bridget Frazier comes away with the rebound. As she will push the tempo, she's defended by three Patriots. Kicks it off to McEwen, or I'm sorry, to, uh, to Hutchinson. Now there's McEwen. She dribbles it inside over to Frazier. Frazier puts up the shot, and it's good. 
Highlanders are going to have to start making those outside and outside mid-range as well as three-point shots to get that defense to spread out a little bit so any sort of penetration will be effective. That will be part of it. The other thing is, Todd, the, watching the clock now, uh, already two minutes just about gone here now. The clock is going to be important, so going to the basket for the high percentage shot and maybe getting fouled to stop that clock. Matero's runner no good. Hutchinson able to steal that one away as, they, as D D Simone tried to save it back inbounds, and a foul is going to be called. I think, let's see here, I didn't see who they called that one on. That's on D Simone. D Simone. Yeah, 24. Full court pressure being applied by Revere. Pretty they're simple, a, they're double or triple teaming the ball. They are on a 25 to four run here as McEwen gets it across, or I should say Hutchinson gets it across the timeline. They look down low, there's Good McEwen. Luck. I keep on trying to find her. There she is again for the shot and she misses the first, gets her own rebound, gets it knocked away. Ball's fought for, out of bounds off of Belois. It will go to Good Somerville. Bet. Islanders trailing by nine here. So they get it inbounded to McEwen, back over to Hutchinson. Hutchinson drives into the paint, goes up for the runner, no good. Right idea though, Todd, go to the basket, get the high percent shot, and maybe get fouled. G. Simone gets it out to the left corner, three-pointer put up, no good, as McEwen gets the weak side rebound. And Hutchinson drives in, gets fouled, we'll see who they call that on. That's going to be called on Al-Assad. Yeah. Well, picking up the tempo is the right idea because they at least had a decent opportunity to get on the floor, Todd. Right now, Jill's got a chance to add two more. Jill at the line looking for two. Al-Assad, I've got that listed as her second personal. First shot up. Good by Hutchinson. Hutchinson now looking to cut the Revere lead to seven. And that is no good. As De Simone comes away with the rebound. Way down court, tries to get that one down to DeAngelis. But Frankie not able to handle it. Turnover goes to the Highlanders, trailing by eight. That one knocked away by De Simone as Frazier tried to pass it up court. And being fought for now, Sferena came away with it. Highlanders with the ball, trailing by eight, five minutes remaining in the game. Interior pass down to Ferena, and she will be called for the travel as Batero was there defensively. The Ferena's had a hard time underneath the team. She wants to put the ball on the floor every time she handles it and that was a obviously a problem by the time she got the floor she moved that back foot easy call for the official so just under five minutes left in the game Highlanders trailing by eight Revere has charged back here in the second half the Highlanders were leading in that leading at the end of the first half by nine points and now they trail by eight De Simone brings it down. Gets it to Batera, Batera to Al Assad. Al Assad with it now. Over to De Simone. De Simone drives into the paint, gives it up to Cortez. And that is no good as Isabella Cortez Lopera missed that shot, her getting her first action of the day. Frazier gets it over to Ramadan, over to Hutchinson. Hutchinson defended by De Simone. Over to Frazier. Frazier over to Ramadan. Ramadan's shot is up. That is no good. As Cortez Lapera comes away with the rebound. That inside penetration is going to have to be the key for the Lady Highlanders, Todd, because the clock is going to be working against them. Good job by Hutchinson getting her hand in there. We'll see who that goes out on. It's going to stay with the Patriots. We have a face mask situation, I think, that is bedeviling Batero. 
As Belois is checked back into the game, Al Assad has it on the left wing, defended by Frazier. Penetration there out to De Simone. As Belois gets that one blocked by Frazier on the inside. Islanders trailing by eight, 345. Frazier with the runner in the lane, and the foul is called. As Frazier will go to the line for two. Two zero. That foul is going to be called against uh, Belois. Frazier's first shot is up, it's no good. Bridget did exactly what she should be doing, going to the basket, because we want this situation. Stop the clock and have the chance to put some points on the board without the clock running. Second shot by Frazier up, and that one's good. Seven point lead for the Patriots, and they have the ball. As Beloy, or I'm sorry, Batero hits another three. That's her third three of the game and gives the Patriots the 10-point lead. Highlanders trying to break the pressure. It's a double team, comes at the half court, gets it off to Frazier. Frazier off to Ferreira. Ferreira over to Hutchinson. Hutchinson backs out of the baseline drive, gets it back to Ferreira. Her shot is up. It's no good as De Simone and Frazier fighting for it. And it's going to be a jump ball on the alternating possession. You can yep. honestly say, down goes Frazier on that play. That is true. Highlanders will maintain possession. As Frazier and DeSimone battling for that rebound. Frazier got the better of it, I think. Hutchinson now. Looking for help. Gets it down to Ferreira. And is going to get called for the travel. And she shifted that pivot foot. And with the clock winding down, now, Todd, those are turnovers, the killers, because there's a shot you could not, you don't get a chance to take. With 10 points in under three minutes, it's going to take great defensive pressure right now to stop this would be a Patriot offense. And Hutchinson starts play. that with a nice pass. As Hutchinson goes in after stealing that pass and comes away with the two. Highlanders down by eight, three, 235 remaining in the game. De Simone has it, gives it off to Batero. Nice pass there by uh, De Simone. And Batero goes to the line for two. I again did not see who they called that foul on. I couldn't He's, quite tell. I think it was 31, which would be um, Which would be for Reina. First shot by Batero, no good. Batero's second shot is up. And that was no good off the front of the rim. Frazier gets the rebound. Hutchinson down to du Blanchard. Blanchard gets called for the foul, or cuts called for the travel, I should say, and another turnover for the Highlanders. Islanders trailing by eight, 223 remaining in the game. Struggling with turnovers tonight. It's difficult when you have more turnovers than points, Todd. Nelson's shot is up, it's no good. Farina gets the rebound. They get it over to Elizabeth McEwen. She will get it to Frazier as the pressure can. Frazier now gets it over to Hutchinson, trying to beat this pressure. Goes into the paint, gives it over to Blanchard. Blanchard tried to pass that one, stolen away by Nelson. Minute 50 remaining in the game. Highlanders trailing by eight. De Simone with it, gives it over to Nelson. And De Simone over to Al Assad, out to Nelson. Nelson with the baseline drive. Her shot is up. It is no good, but she is fouled as Lauren Farina mm -hmm. called for that one. Shoot. 
Nelson at the line looking to make it a nine point lead with this one. No good on the first. As Ramadan and Benavido checking in. Nelson's second shot is up. That one rolling in. Nine point lead now for the Patriots. As Ramadan has it on the inbounds and she is across the sideline, out of bounds. And the Patriots will get it on another turnover by the Highlanders. A minute 30 remaining in the game. Highlanders trailing by nine and it looks like Revere's gonna empty their bench. As Demopoulos coming back out. Anderson as well, and Alicia Lung. DeSimone and Batero staying in the game. Batero has it. Thought about the cutting DeSimone, instead goes to Anderson. Now DeSimone has it, or the pass to DeSimone, knocked out of bounds by Ramadan. De Simone goes up for it, no good. Up, Minute third turn. Yeah. Minute 10 remaining in the game. Frazier driving in, takes the runner, no good, but she is fouled. That's gonna be, that should be, maybe be. See, De Simone might get teed up here. Yeah, she slammed the ball down. Warning. Minute seven left. Frazier's first shot is up and it's good. Mm. Highlanders looking to cut this down to an eight point lead. Jasmine Rodriguez checking in along with Gianna Lozano. And Lozano comes away with the rebound as Frazier missed the foul shot. He's, his lung, her pass is stolen away. Bridget Frazier coming back the other direction. Her shot is up and it's good. 53 seconds remaining in the game. 43-36 the score, seven point lead for Revere. And Ramadan tries to steal that one away. Lung working it around as that one's stolen by Hutchinson. Hutchinson down the other way. Jill puts that one up and in. As this one tightening up now, the Highlanders trailing by five. And that one's going to be stolen away by Benavita. And Benavita kicks it back. Ramadan puts up the shot. It's no good. Rebound being fought for. As Farina fighting there for that rebound with Lasano. A timeout being called by Revere. 13 seconds left in the game. The Highlanders have stormed back from a nine point deficit to make it a five point deficit as Revere emptied their bench. And you know, I think uh, both Hutchinson and Frazier took advantage of uh, some of the, the weaker Revere players, but there might be a little too little too late, I'm afraid, Todd, because the turnover issue uh, for the Highlanders in the fourth period was, uh, was devastating. At one point, there were more turnovers than points. So the Highlanders leading by nine at the half uh, have uh, struggled here in the second half. The Patriots came out uh, very, very aggressively, defensively, specifically DeSimone and Al-Assad, as they really did a good job Ding up specifically against Frazier and Hutchinson running them into double teams, trapping them in the full court, and getting those turnovers to happen. And that, and that resulted in only five points for the entire period for the Lady Highlanders, which at that point killed the lead, and all the momentum went to Revere at that time. They loosened up, and they've been making the outside shots. We've seen Nelson and Vitero having a great fourth period. Al-Assad and DeSimone back in. Now as DeSimone has it, she's waiting to be fouled, and Frazier will oblige her. And Sheila Freitas-Haley will call her last time out. 
With 10 seconds remaining, a five-point deficit for the Highlanders, and DeSimone will be at the line. DeSimone on the day. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, I believe she's made all but one of her free throws, I've That's got. That's right, I've got that right. So she's three one, two, four, three, yeah. four, five. Actually, no, she's missed two. So she's three for five. But a very smooth stroke, I've noted. Um, obviously, Carolina Batero and um, Lamis Al Assad have been the Highland Killers here um, in the second half. Todd, they've both done a terrific job. Uh, Batero making two threes. Um, Lamis Al Assad um, in the third quarter, seven points, and a, another basket in the fourth quarter. Uh, Skylar De Simone, obviously, too. Again, she had seven points in that. Uh, third period that those two right there really took and deflated the Highlander lead very quickly. No doubt about that. De Simone and Al Assad just very, very active defensively, really causing problems for Frazier and Hutchinson out there here in the second half. And that has led to this moment. The Highlanders trailing by five. De Simone will be at the line with 10 seconds remaining in the game. Nope, I'm sorry, she won't be at the line. It was a held ball situation. Held ball situation, my bad. Alternating possession, the Highlanders have it. Trailing by five, trying to get a good inbounds there as Hutchinson gets it over to Benavito. Her shot is up, it's no good, partially blocked. Mm -hmm. And a foul is going to be called. Uh, and that's uh, Liz and McEwen. Yep, McEwen gets called, whistled for that one. And Nelson will be at the line shooting two. We're in the double bonus. 10 fouls in the period, you get two shots. First one by Nelson, no good. <laughs> Looking to clear the bench again is Revere. up no good by Nelson Farina gets it over to Frazier and this will do it and that is all she wrote as the Highlanders fall here tonight by the score of 38 to 43 disappointing loss for the Highlanders as we talked about Jack throughout the uh, tail end of the fourth quarter there a good lead at the half for the Lady Highlanders but uh, the defensive intensity by Revere ratcheted up um, and uh, the Highlanders didn't seem to have an answer for that. Congratulations, Vivian Patriots, Absolutely. for taking an opportunity to prevent Jill Hutchinson and Bridget Frazier, who were dominant in the first period. They were very effective coming out and double teaming both Bridget and Jill when they tried to go inside as they were successful during the first half. Would either knock the ball away or prevent it from getting inside. And Revere caught fire in that third period with. Lamise Al-Assad, as we mentioned, at both ends of the floor, defensively and offensively, made a huge impact and took that momentum right away from the Highlanders. No doubt about that. We'll hit the scores real quick. High score for the game was Jill Hutchinson. She had 15. Um, also scoring in the game for the Highlanders, we had uh, Elizabeth McEwen with seven points, Lindsay Farena with three points, uh, Bridget Frazier ended up, let's see here, with 14 points. On the uh, Revere side of the ledger, Carolina Batero with the three-point onslaught of the second half led for them with 13 points. Lamis al Assad with 10 points, 10 points for Alana Nelson, uh, one point for Haley Belois, mm -hmm. and eight points for Skyla De Simone. Um, just uh, defensive intensity and execution there in the second half seemed to pull it away for the Patriots as the Highlanders went down to uh, the Patriots today by the score of 38-43. Highlanders now 0-3 on the season, Patriots 1-4. And, and now Bridget Frazier and Jill Hutchinson seem to be the, the two dynamic duo for the high school. Uh, Liz and McEwen chips in once in a while, but uh, we've got to get a little more offensive punch distributed uh, with the Lady Highlanders. You can't rely on those two or, and sometimes three individuals to carry the load for you. Obviously, the coaches, Coach uh, Willis here from Revere, figured it out early on that, okay, we're going to stop these two, let someone else beat us, and as a result, uh, the bench and uh, some of the other starters were not able to pick up the offensive load, which was necessary. You get two defenders playing one, somebody else has to uh, pick up the ball, and we did not see any 
offensive punch in that third period, limited to five points. Rivera came roaring back with uh, an offensive onslaught in the third period and maintained it with the three-point shots in the fourth quarter. And um, the Lady Highlanders simply could not get back and make it close enough um, where they could try and play a isolation game, just not working for them. And as a result, they've got a little more work to do defensively to keep the ball from getting inside as was very easy to happen here this afternoon for the Revere Patriots. So that's going to do it for us today, or tonight I should say. Uh, we will be back here on Somerville Educational Channel 15 with the Lady Highlanders on Friday, March 26th at uh, 6 currently. That's listed at 6 p.m. currently. That is subject to change. And that will be against Everett. A big matchup there. Everett, uh, an excellent team always. So looking forward to that one. Also later on this week, we will have some junior varsity action for the boys. Uh, they will be playing on Wednesday this week. Um, we will be broadcasting that one. I don't know whether we're going to be doing it live, but we definitely will have that one on Somerville Educational Channel 15 for you as well down the road. Uh, the JV team will be looking to cover them, the boys side as well, and hopefully the, the uh, varsity boys will get to play at some point in time down the road as well with the uh, COVID protocols currently not able to. But uh, that's going to do it for us today. Uh, thank you very much, Jack. I appreciate it. It's great to be back doing games with with you. We're going to sign off now as you've been watching Somerville basketball, basketball on Somerville Educational Channel 15. Thank you. Great job, Todd.